Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Karma. Imagine a world where your communications with your prospects are automatically created for you and personalized so that each prospect feels like you are talking to them. Imagine a world where you can create immersive virtual reality experiences for your clients. Imagine a world where you can only put in your A game because AI has taken all the drudge out. Hi, my name is Karma Spence and I help entrepreneurs write lead attracting books in 90 days or less. Today is Fun Friday, and I thought it might be fun to speculate about the future and what, what do all these emerging technologies, what do they bode for our future as authors, as writers? I was having an interesting conversation with a colleague of mine yesterday. Um, he's a technical writer, and we were talking about how AI would be capable of writing like the first draft of what we write as technical writers, which would mean that you would need fewer technical writers in your department. It would also mean every technical writer would have to up their game. The, the cream would have to rise to the top. And this got me thinking about all the fears and the hopes for the future because of AI. I mean, look at ch what, how chat has revolutionized the way a lot of us do business. I mean, I often use it to help me create my social posts. I, I use it to help me create my plans. It has given me back time. Editing my podcast, I don't edit this one, but I do edit the other one, used to take me days. Because you had to edit, like you had to listen and then edit and listen. But now I use a software called Descript, which is an AI enhanced editing software. It transcribes the video and then I can edit as if I'm editing a Word document and it edits the video. So now what used to take me days takes me hours, gives me back my time. And I'm probably not going to burn out on that podcast like I have all the other podcasts I've, I've launched. I mean, AI is amazing, but. Yeah, the fear is real. It could get rid of some jobs. However, it's going to get rid of the, the lower skilled jobs. It will never fully, I don't think it will ever replace a human being because it's a robot. It's, it doesn't have emotion. It doesn't have, it doesn't have that je ne sais quoi. <laughs> so, I think I can see in the future that AI could drastically improve our lives as writers because it would get rid of the drudgery part of what we do, allowing us to be the creative of what we do. Now, does that mean that some people will find it harder to become authors because they just don't have those skills? Yes. That's why they hire ghostwriters. <laughs> and ghostwriters will deal with that. It may mean that some people can't get in because they they can't afford it. So there there is a shifting, but it just means that we need to really up our game and be more skillful at what we do and 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 dive deeper into it and not phone it in. That's what AI is making us. It's it's causing people who easily phone things in to phone things in and they're going to fall away. They're not going to be successful. Whereas the people who use this as a challenge to up their game, they're going to be the winners in this future. So this leads into another topic of how traditional writing roles are going to be changing. I mean, like what my conversation with my colleague. Basically, hacks are going to find it hard, hard to get writing gigs because AI can do it faster and cheaper. So if you're a hack, uh, the writing's probably on the wall. 
but I know you're listening to this podcast. You're following me. You're not a hack. You may find it challenging to take your skill to next. I mean, that's, that's what upping your game is. It's a challenge and you just need to decide whether that challenge is worth it or not. I think it is. I mean, I'm diving into all, yes, I am diving. I am diving into all sorts of things to up my game. I'm learning about persuasion. I'm learning about the psychology of creativity. I'm learning about these things because all those things mesh inside my brain and help me create better content, better content than AI could ever create. You know, I need to be careful on that because who knows, Skynet might be right around the corner. <laughs> anyway, so another thing that all these emerging technologies can create is personalization at scale. So right now we have the ability to like put in a little like little thing in our email. So it's dear karma or dear Joe or dear Jill or dear Jack, you know, the email feels like it's written specifically for you, even though it isn't. And now we also have the ability to uh, create chatbots that have an AI component, give that AI a library of our content. And so now people can come to our website, ask the chatbot stuff, and the chatbot will answer with your content. It takes a little setup, but it is doable today. Now imagine taking that to the next step. What if it could create videos? I mean, Molly Mahoney has an AFI, you can tell it's not her because it's, it's a little, it's a little off. I mean, I remember when she first showed, I'm like, it looks like her, but something, is she okay? <laughs> that was my initial feeling was like, is she, is she sick? <laughs> and it turned out it was an AI version of her, but that it was really close. I saw a video once of Morgan Freeman. It had Morgan Freeman's voice. It looked like Morgan Freeman talking. And then they split the screen and showed it wasn't Morgan Freeman talking, it was some guy talking, but AI was interpreting it into Morgan Freeman, giving it Morgan Freeman's voice. And it was really, really convincing. And I saw another video a few weeks ago, <laughs> it was great. This person created a documentary about their cat and used um, Richard Attenborough's voice. So <laughs> It was, it was like, and the cat is, it, it, it was, it was funny. Uh, it is Richard Attenborough. It's Attenborough, Sir Attenborough. I think it's Sir Attenborough. I think he's a sir now. Anyway, it was, it was great. So there's all these things that you can, the AI can do to create personalization, which actually can give people a better, more personalized experience now that said it's going to be half it's going to have to be backed by you and your information and so there's a there's setup to do but then it can take it to the next level so that you don't have to hire a bunch of call center people it will get rid of call center jobs oh i know a lot of people i mean i think the ai is going to replace a lot of entry-level jobs and i was actually also, also talking with my colleague about this it's like the problem with getting so the the pro of getting rid of a of entry-level jobs is that companies save money the con is a lot of times in order to go up in skill you need that you need that entry-level job you need the entry level job to figure out how to do things, how to learn. And so with the loss of entry level jobs, you're, you're going to displace a lot of people and block a lot of people. And this is, this is going to run across. This is not a racist thing. This is across everybody, every, because everybody needs to have an entry point. And some people they need that entry point to be an entry level job. In fact, I would hazard to say most people, I've had entry level jobs. I, I first started my career at, at a snack bar. That helped me learn how to handle money, how to deal with clients, how to deal with customers. I learned so much working at a snack bar. If I had not had that snack bar job, I may not have gotten the next job, which was at House of Fabrics. And then my next job after that, was what did i do after i worked at sears and walden books <laughs> there's a blast from the past 
I used to work at Walden Books. In fact, one time I had a job at both Walden and B. Dalton. <laughs> I, had to, I was working at Sears and, and I remember one, one year, one summer, which of course has the longest days, right? I never saw the sun except for like once every few weeks. Because I would start work at one job really early in the morning and end the second job late at night. And I never left the building because it was all in one mall. There was a Walden Books and a Sears. Those jobs may go away. Some of them won't because some of them require human, a human contact, but there'll be fewer of them. So there'll be greater competition. I don't know, kind of scary. Um, some of these new technologies, writing in the future, which I think is really cool is virtual reality and augmented reality. Right now, it's really easy to see how these can augment the fiction experience, but I think they can also enhance the nonfiction experience. Imagine, imagine you're reading a book about, oh, I don't know. Let's, let's just say my next book. My next book is about how to come up with your idea for your lead generating book. Imagine if while you were reading that, um, there's a section on mindstorming. You got into this virtual reality experience. And instead of having to write stuff on paper, you were interacting with your ideas and pulling them around. I mean, I don't know if you saw the, the trailer for Google's new VR glasses, but once you put on those VR glasses, you can interact with your computer in three-dimensional space. Can you imagine reading a book in three-dimensional space like in not i mean you obviously are reading it in three-dimensional space but interacting with the information in three-dimensional space brainstorming in three-dimensional space rather than two-dimensional space i mean the possibilities are amazing and it can enhance our experience i mean there, there's always a danger i mean i wa <laughs> watched that trailer and part of me was scared because i could just see you know, I watched Star Trek. I watched that episode where the game took over people's minds. <laughs> it's like, I could, don't get straight into my brain. <laughs> you know? Okay. So, of course, all these things, there's all the possibility that's wonderful. But we're always going to have to take a look at the ethics and, and, and how it's changing our society in harmful ways because isaac asimov once said that and i'm paraphrasing that humanity is so lazy it will expend a great deal of energy so that it doesn't have to and that therein lies the problem we are creating technologies that make our life easier which can make us lazier and when we become lazier we become less creative and so we'll all need to step up and keep up that challenge while making use of the benefits of all these new technologies. It's always going to be a balance. So there, I will leave you with that deep thought. And if you are ready to write your lead generating book, drop an emoji or write the word quick start in the comments around this video. And I will send you a link to my quick start guide for writing your authority building short book. That book helps you understand what your authority building style is, what kind of short book would be best match for what your goal is and for your authority building style, and then walks you through my framework for coming up with your idea in about 15 minutes. So there you go. Drop an emoji or write quick start in the comments, and I will send you that link. Otherwise, ciao for now. Have a wonderful weekend and I will see you on Monday.